Uh, she's down there. She's in there? Yep. Okay. All right, I guess you're ready then. Okay, we're ready. Ready to go. Okay. You want me to take it away? Sure. Okay. Um, I I can't tell. Is uh, Ms. Grass present? No, Is Mr. Project. She's not with us. Um, but the rest of the board members are here. Okay. She will not be joining us tonight. Okay. Well, we welcome you to this August 18, 2020 meeting of the City of Charleston Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, present are Mr. Judon, Mr. Morrison, Ms. Richards, Mr. Robinson, and Mr. Croce. Um, from the city staff, Ms. Ashby, and Mr. Batchelder, and Ms. Ellington. And um, obviously, these proceedings are being recorded. Uh, and we have a, a relatively short agenda. Uh, this board does three basic things. We hear appeals from the zoning, the decisions of the zoning administrator. We grant special exceptions, which is a fact-finding function of the board. And we have the authority to grant uh, variances to the zoning ordinance if the application meets the hardship test outlined in section 54, 924 of the ordinance. In order for the board to grant a zoning variance, uh, it has to find that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property, that these conditions do not generally apply to other property in the vicinity, that because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance to the particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property. And lastly, the board has to find that the authorization of a variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good, and the character of the district will not be harmed by the granting of the variance. Uh, the, um, we have three items on the agenda. Batchelder, any other preliminary matters that um, I need to comment about? Just that uh, if the um, if the if there will be any public comment, that that will happen after I speak, and, and uh, each person of the pub, each member of the public that wants to address the board would be sworn in by the chair. Uh, prior to speaking, and uh, once we go through the people who are in favor and then the people who are opposed, we will come back to the applicant and recognize them for a short rebuttal. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I think we're ready. Okay, the um, first item on the agenda. Rare setback, 25 feet required, zone DR1F. Um, Mr. Batchel. So this is a residential property in Hurlston Village, and uh, it is zone DR1F. Here's the zoning map, shows that the property is zone DR1F, and all of the surrounding properties have the same zoning. That zoning district requires a 25 foot rear setback but just looking at this map, see that there is a accessory building already in the back of this property Next property line. 
This aerial photograph shows the building, this building right here. And, uh, there is a, the applicant is requesting uh, your approval to add a small one-story addition right in this location. Uh, this is the site plan showing the existing house and accessory building on the property. And it's right in this area between these two palm trees that the extension, the small addition is proposed. So the addition will be a few feet off the rear property line, whereas the existing building is right up to the property line. Here's the floor plan. And you can see this is the proposed addition in elevation. Um, it looks like this. So this is the addition in very small. And the test for the board is whether the um, in, in considering whether this is a reasonable intensification of the non-conforming building footprint it doesn't satisfy the rear building setback is whether the um, addition would obstruct airflow or light onto the adjoining property and uh, um, in our opinion that won't be an issue uh, given the the nature of the area, the, how the other buildings in the area are situated, and the fact that this is such a small addition. So we think this <clears throat> application meets the special ex step, exception test and should be approved. And I know we have one letter of support, which Penny will uh, read at the appropriate time. Ms. Ashby, is there any opposition to this application? No, Mr. Project, no opposition that I'm aware of. Uh, would you briefly state uh, what the letter of support says, please? Yes, sir. Um, this letter is coming from Histor Historic Charleston Foundation that has an easement on 12 Franklin, and they have reviewed and approved the request for an addition to the outbuilding on this property. This is coming from April Wood. Um, are there any other, anyone else that you know of who would like to comment on this application? No, Mr. Krawcheck. Okay. Uh, do I hear any discussion or any motions? Move for approval. Uh, Mr. Robinson moves approval. Is a second to that motion? Second. A second. I think Mr. Judon seconds the motion. Any discussion? Um, those voting in favor of the motion, please say aye. Any opposed, nay. Uh, Mr. Judon. Aye. Uh, Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison votes aye. Ms. Richards. Aye. Uh, Mr. Robinson. Aye. And Mr. Krawcheck votes aye. Uh, by a unanimous vote, the uh, motion is carried and the application is approved. Item number two on the agenda is 39 Montague Street, Austin uh, Village. It's for a variance to allow detached accessory building, storage, bike shed with a three foot rest. <laughs> and the three foot west side setback, uh, 25 feet and 12 feet required, STR. Mr. Batchelder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a residential property in Harleston Village also, and it's a uh, property that sits right off Rutledge Avenue. The, the property adjacent to uh, this lot is actually a commercial property that's between the corner of Rutledge and Montague. And uh, you can see that here in the 
<clears throat> slide presentation. So what you have here is a commercial building with a parking area that is immediately adjacent to 39 Montague. You also see that there's a very nice tree in the back of 39 Montague and that the house is set back from and uh, has virtually no rear yard. This zoning map also illustrates those conditions and the applicant has submitted their uh, variance argument. So these are Sanborn drawings that show the uh, history of the lot and there was an accessory building in the back corner where they're proposing to build this one in the 1944-1951 Sanborn maps. And these are photographs that show uh, this existing walkway actually leads from the backyard of 39 Montague through a gate into that parking area. <clears throat> and uh, that remains in the, in the proposal. So on the top is the existing condition to the walkway here connecting to the adjacent property through this gate. There is one small uh, storage shed back here right now. And then here's the location of that very nice tree at the backyard. It's not a grand tree, but it is a very large tree, large oak tree. That they want to uh, work around. So with those conditions, the fact that there is very little rear yard and there's this nice tree <clears throat> they have very little space to build any more storage space uh, in, a, in a storage shed uh, on the property and meet the setback requirements, which I believe are, are identified here with this red line. So, um, <clears throat> and Penny, by the way, before I go too much further, I'm not sure who the applicant and owner are um but if you see them on the participant list or yes um, list. the the applicant is bill huey and associates and i don't see him here michelle is his associate she may have signed up i believe yes okay well i'm gonna i'm going to mother her to the panelist and allow her to speak at the appropriate time but i just want to make sure i did that yes sir i'll go back to the <clears throat> proposed site plan you see the location of the storage shed right here it's a very small building There we go. Close up view of the site plan, 160 square feet of footprint. Three feet off the rear, three feet off the side. And this is the elevation and floor plan. And uh, <clears throat> I think with this, the circumstances that they have here and the fact that this is a very small storage building, very minimal impact to any adjoining properties and the fact that the commercial property next door is a parking lot, an office building, not, not another residence that would be impacted. I think they satisfy the variance test and, and we recommend that this be approved. And now um, and so that concludes my recommendation and Penny, I think you said we had letters from neighbors in support. Yes, Mr. Batchelder. We have the owner of 86 Rutledge Avenue, 
and we have the owner of 82 Rutledge Avenue adjacent properties to this property that have submitted their letters of support. No one in opposition, Ms. Ashby? No, sir. <laughs> Mr. Batchelder, your recommendation was for approval. Approval. Okay. Any of the any discussion among the board members? Any motions? Move for approval. Mr. Robinson moves approval. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Morrison seconds the motion. Any discussion? Those voting aye, excuse me, those voting in favor, please say aye and opposed, nay. Um, Mr. Judon. Aye. Mr. Morrison. Aye. And Ms. Richards. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. And Mr. Krawcheck votes aye. Uh, the motion is unanimously carried and the variance is approved. The next and last item on the agenda is uh, item number 346H Street West Side, special exception to allow a single family residence on a lot of insufficient size. Lot area is 2,319 square feet, 2,500 square feet required, zone DR2F, Mr. Tabacho. So <clears throat> this is a vacant lot, residentially zoned vacant lot, located in the west side neighborhood on 8th Street. And this map shows the location. Uh, it's, part, it's one of a series of lots bounded by 8th Street on one side and F Street on the other. These are all residentially zoned lots. And you can see many of them between F and 8th Street have a very similar size. The zoning map shows the, the uh, vacant lot right here. You can see that the other lot, immediate lots in the area have um, homes on them. This one, however, does not. And the aerial view, you see those homes and you see this vacant lot. So the, the applicant would like to locate this tiny house, very small house on that lot. But in order to do that, they need a special exception because the size of the lot is not does not meet the minimum size requirement for this zoning district. This is a site plan showing the proposed location of that house. It will meet it will more than meet all the setback requirements and certainly there's plenty of room for parking. And uh, these dimension lines illustrate that. And then the attorney representing the applicant has submitted a letter, but um, essentially the, the standard for this is whether the uh, uh, board deems the site plan for this proposed house uh, to not be in conflict with the intent and purposes of the ordinance and and uh, uh, this lot being slightly smaller than the minimum size and I, virtually identical to many other lots in this immediate area that have homes on them. I think clearly this was intended to be a lot for a house. And so a special exception should be approved and this home should be allowed to be constructed in this lot. So we recommend approval of this request. Ash B, is there anyone in opposition? No, Mr. Krawcheck, none, no one that I'm aware of. Any uh, letters of support? Uh, no, sir. No communications of support or non-support. 
City recommends approval. Is there any discussion? Any motions? I'll move for approval. Ms. Richards moves for approval. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Mr. Judon seconds the motion. Any discussion? If you're in favor, please vote aye. If you're opposed, nay. Uh, Mr. Judon. Aye. Mr. Morrison. Aye. Ms. Richards. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. And Mr. Krawcheck votes aye. Uh, by unanimous vote, the special exception is approved. <laughs> so, Batch Elder has, any, has asked me anything further. Well, um, that concludes all the applications on our agenda, but doesn't conclude all of the important business that we have to take care of tonight because uh, tonight, as all of the board members know, is uh, Chairman Krawcheck's last meeting as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals and, and uh, nothing certainly that I could say, and I'm not a very eloquent speaker, but there's nothing that I don't think anybody could say that would really, uh, how significant your contribution to the city of Charleston has been. I've only been here for a short time uh, of your, entire time on the Board of Zoning Appeals, but I've had the opportunity to witness so many uh, incredible moments where difficult meetings were maintained, order was maintained in difficult meetings and, and uh, sound decisions were made in spite of uh, difficult circumstances. So uh, I know um, you will be greatly missed on the board and uh, in the city for your service, but uh, hopefully uh, in some way the contributions will continue. Um, uh, but but um, so just, I guess I'll sum it up by saying thank you very much, Lenny, for all your service to the city and, and uh, I wish we could do something in person uh, to recognize you, but, uh, and maybe in time that will happen, but, uh, uh, that's all I, I would like to say, but if anybody else would like to add to that, I think this would be a welcome, a good time to do that. I think the photo was very appropriate. I think we're sailing off into the sunset. And, um, he's quite a sailor, as most of you probably know, one of the national events. And one of the premier sailors in, in this at least in this part of the country. Um, I've been on the board for more than 30 years, and I can tell you he's been a guiding light to me from the very first day and continued on into these later days. And uh, very sad to see him go on, but we stand and this change is essential. So uh, I just wish him luck. He, Assured me he's not retiring from the law. So Good. He'll be able to render his very, very important decisions and, and recommendations to the public. I want to thank you, Lenny, for everything you've done and for such a fine example for me and for the other members of the board. Yeah. Um, Thank you all very much for those kind words. It's, um, Lenny, I'd, before you start, I, this Howell, I'd just like to say that I'm sorry you're leaving uh, when I've only had a chance to have a few meetings with you. It's your example uh, on this board that was a large part of my motivation for wanting to come onto this board and, and what you have done for all these many years, in my opinion, is the very epitome of selfless public service. And I just want to thank you for it. Mr. Krawcheck, this is Mr. Judon. I want to truly say that for my short period of time, 
what have amazed me about you is your knowledge of the law and your balance for human emotions and feelings. You try to mix the two together to give justice as much as you can. And I don't think you can do better than that. And when I heard that you were leaving my mind, I said, Mr. Kotchak, you made me feel so comfortable and confident, and I look to you every meeting um, for your wisdom, your grace, and uh, like Mr. Jadon said, just the way you were able to make everyone feel comfortable and everyone's um, opinion feel valid and then come to a reasonable conclusion. Um, it's been really inspirational, and I, I have learned so much from you, and I hope I can uh, Continue in your good example on the board. Thank you so much. Thank you all very, very much. I am, um, it, it, it's been a labor of love. I've, I've got a lot of, a little bit emotional. I, it's been a lifetime uh, experience and it's time. It's um, over 40 years and I'm proud. I say that with, um, I'm proud of that. Um, I'm confident, and, and I really am confident, that the the board is in good hands. Um, uh, the the Lee and Penny do an extraordinary job of public service. Uh, the way they treat the public, and what I love about this board, and I'm not going I'm not going to keep you here very long. But what I love about this board is is I think that for for the most part, um, those that, that are interested in, in our decisions, um, when they walk out of the door, win or lose, um, it's got to be one way or the other uh, in, in most cases. I think that, that they feel like they've had a fair shake. And that's all you can really hope for. You, you've got to make the decisions. You've got to apply the facts that you find or the law that we have. and and come out with a decision. Somebody just shared his uh, wisdom and his knowledge. And, uh, and, and for those of you who hadn't been on quite as long, um, it really is a very good board, um, yeah. and um, I'm proud to say that I've, I've served with lots of good people over the years. I really have. I mean that sincerely. It's been terrific. No kicks, uh, no regrets. Um, I'm gonna, you know, move on, and uh, I'll be around. And any help I can give, um, I'm sure, you know, I'm available. And thank you all for your for your really kind words. It means a lot to me. And I, I wish everybody the best. Mr. Lenny, this is Penny. I'll be very brief. <clears throat> I had to get myself together. But anyway, um, <laughs> this isn't goodbye because I know that, like you said, you're still going to be in your practice. So I will still have the wonderful opportunity to engage with you from time to time. And um, I, I don't have words right now to fully express how I feel, but I think you know how I feel. And it's just been a truly a treasure to have met, to know you, and to have worked with you. And I wish you the best and um, enjoy your, 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 your many, many retirement, at least from this board. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know you mean that, Penny, and thank you so much. Well, I think the meeting should be adjourned. And thank you all, really sincerely. Thank you again, Lenny. When we get out of this uh, little virus problem, we'll have us. We'll have a real reception for you. <laughs> thank you. <Yes. laughs> and, and how, and even if you don't, this is enough for me. I promise you. 
thanks for those kind words that just just mean so much to me and I I truly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. God bless you. I don't know where they got that sailing picture from, but that's from your website. Went off into the sunset. Right? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you.